Greetings and praise the Lord. Welcome to our daily devotion. Today's devotion or this week's devotion is on the anointed. Well, um, by and by in the course of the week, we'll be expounding on what anointing, uh, being anointed, what being anointed means or the purpose of the anointing and why we are anointed. I would want us to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for giving us yet another moment where we can hear your word. And where, Lord Jesus, you are, you are going to teach us on the anointing, for you are the anointed one, you are the Messiah. And that is why, Lord Jesus, because you desire that each one of us is going to walk in your paths. Well, paths are the paths of righteousness. We declare that those ones who do not know you as Lord and Savior, that my Lord, your word, as they hear it, King of glory, no one will continue to remain in the valley of decision, but they will give their lives to you so that you can walk them this journey of faithfulness until the end. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our first episode is on being set apart. The work of the anointing is to set apart. Well, in Psalms uh, 23 verse 5, we actually did Psalms chapter 23 verse 1 and 2 and even touched some of part 3 and 4. But this time I would want us to have a look at chapter, I mean uh, at verse 5. Um, I'm reading from the TPT translation. It says, you became my delish, delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. What a blessing that the Lord himself becomes even our feast in the presence of our enemies. Can you imagine feasting in front of your enemies? Do you imagine you sitting at the high table while your enemy is watching you right at the gate, not even able to enter? That is the God we serve. That is what is going to do to set you apart. That is why you need to come to the Lord, you that has not known him. And this time I'm seeing quite a number of people that have been staying in the valley of decision for a long time. And whatever that has been hindering you from getting into or crossing over so that you can walk as the Lord leads you by being born again, allowing Christ to become Lord and Savior. I am declaring that whatever is on your way is being cast out. And you that is staying just like an ordinary person, not knowing that there is a, that anointing that is there available for you to set you apart so that you can be feasting in front of your enemies. I'm here to let you know, wake up, rise up, awake so that the Lord can guide you and lead you because it pleases you when you are feasting. It pleases him when you are allowing the enemy to be ashamed, not to laugh at you. And at this time, the believers are not your enemies. The believers will never be your enemies. So let's know who our enemy is. So that when we are feasting before the Lord, and even in front of our enemies, we know who the enemy is. And the Lord is telling us, you, uh, the David also wrote and said, you anoint me with the fragrance oil. Um, a fragrance of your Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the fragrance of the Holy Spirit is great, is wonderful. If you want to know how it looks, it feels like to be in heaven, you just be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and you'll be able to sense the fragrance that the Lord has for us in heaven. And you give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. We are drinking of the Lord, not anything else. 
if you want a drink, drink of the Lord. The spiritual drink that you need is of the Lord. May the Lord fill you with his spirit. May the Lord fill you with his power. May you enjoy the fragrance of the Holy Spirit as you purpose to allow the Lord to anoint you so that you can move on in a mighty way and in a special way. Well, we see one of the way things um, in the Old Testament, there are three expressions that were anointed in God's, um, that were anointed in God's people, priests, kings, and prophets. These were to be holy expressions necessary for the ministration of God's laws, his mercy, and his counsel. This anointing was to sanctify, empower, and to declare the calling of God upon a man for God's special purpose. So we see one, the, the kings. Let's have a look at the first two kings to be anointed. And the first two kings that were anointed to be anointed set apart for the nation of Israel, um, we see in uh, in uh, in First uh, Samuel chapter nine verse sixteen, uh, ESV, that is English Standard Version. The Bible says, "Tomorrow about this time, I will send to you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be prince over my people Israel. He shall save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have seen my people be because." Their cry has come to me. So the Lord hears the cry. And when he hears the cry, he anoints a deliverer. And this time we see that the first deliverer, I mean the deliverer of the children of Israel, because they had already been delivered before through uh, God using Moses. And now they, they are already in the promised land that God had promised them. And um, they had already, we see that God, now, because of what is going on in their lives, the other nations have kings. The children of Israel, they did not know how to act or even behave. They did not realize, they did not accept their spiritual guidance and leading. They wanted to have someone that they can see, someone that can really release laws unto them and even cause them to pay taxes like other nations. So that is what they wanted and God gave them. Because what you desire... God will give you. Well, sometimes he will not even give, want to give us some of the things because he knows how harmful they are. But this time, the children of Israel, even after being told that when you, I give you a king, what is going to become of you? You're going to be paying taxes. You're going to be, I mean, you, your children will be at war all the time because, you see, he wants to build a, he wants to build an army that is greater and greater than the other armies. So you, you have to get ready to go for war. Your children have to be trained on how to go for war with their enemy all the time. So we see the first king anointed, but he did not live according to the standards. And you know for sure, God already knew he's not going to make it. Because it's only, there's no way you can guide us the, the way God would want us to be led. When God wants to lead us, allow him to lead us. Don't be, want to be like others because that is what the children of Israel wanted. But then we see they cried unto the Lord, continue to cry. And it worried Samuel because Samuel is the one who had anointed that first king, King Saul. And now it really, really worried him because, you know, what the oil that he had anointed with him, anointed him with, it was, for, was God who ordered, God who commanded, God who had already organized on how it's going to be done. And now he's seeing, I mean, he's feeling let down and even feeling that Israel has let down, has let God down, even together with their king. Then our God is faithful. He's good. When you come to realize that what we chose is not good, is not okay and repent, the Lord will hear our cry. First Samuel chapter 16 verses 1 to 3, also from English Standard Version, the Bible says, the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go, I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? 
If so he has it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. So the Lord had to send him back to Israel to go and back to Bethlehem. And um, he had to go to one particular place, to somebody's house, so that he can anoint this other king, the second king, because the first king had been rejected. And you know what? Samuel was afraid because already if he would anoint and Saul would hear, it is not going to be easy for him. But we thank God that the Lord always has a way for us. He knows the direction that is leading us. He doesn't want to just drive us to the hands of the enemy, but he will always rescue us and make sure we are safe. And so tomorrow we'll continue with quite a number of things about the anointing or about the anointed. And I'm telling you, you'll be blessed. Share this message with other people. Let them hear it. And if you're not born again, I continue to invite you to give your life to Jesus and accept the Lord's anointing because it is great, it is sweet, it's the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. God bless you as you purpose to walk in his ways, to serve him, and even to hear his voice. Lord, we thank you for being with us and even speaking to us. We pray that we put into action the word that you've given to us, for it is in Jesus' name we have prayed and believed. Amen. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries. Mother to the Amazing Champions and Mother to the CMCs. Log into our website at www.agracem.org. Please partner with this ministry and even become uh, whatever the Lord guides you to do in this ministry, especially in the area of giving. Be blessed. You'll find ways on where you can give. Um, and then you can also follow us on Facebook and YouTube at the Karuki Bishop Dr. Grace or Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki. And uh, please uh, like, subscribe and even comment. Let's hear what God is doing, especially now that you know what, wh wh why the, the importance of being anointed. They are being, you are anointed to become a leader. You are anointed to walk in God's ways. And you see what? This anointing, especially the anointing of the Holy Spirit, is going to do into our lives. Be blessed for now. Shalom. Shalom.